Hey, I'm Paul. And in this video on scuba diving for beginners, I'm going to tell you how pressure works, which is the central theory you need to know in order to understand everything about scuba diving. This will give you an overview of this concept. You'll cover this concept in more detail on your open water diver course, which is your entry level course into scuba diving. This is not a deep dive into each of these concepts, but rather an introduction. So if you want to know more, please leave a comment in the comment section, like this video, subscribe to this channel and check out my other videos. Understanding these concepts is the foundation for everything you need to know about scuba diving. Understanding this will help you relax and enjoy your diving. Please note that scuba diving is a dangerous sport and watching videos on YouTube is no substitute for taking an open water diving course at your local dive center. Taking a course and getting qualified to scuba dive is the first step you should take towards enjoying the underwater world. In your dive course, you'll cover all these topics in more detail and you'll be able to practice skills with your instructor who'll be able to guide you and make sure you're safe while you practice. My name is Paul. I've been teaching scuba diving since 1998. I'm a Paddy master scuba diver trainer. I've done thousands of dives and taught hundreds of people about diving. Now I'm combining my interest in video with my knowledge of scuba diving. Let's dive in. I know you want to get straight into the sexy stuff like seeing a shark underwater, so stick with me while I build from theory into skills you'll use when you go diving. The first concept you need to know about has to do with air and pressure. Scuba diving revolves around this concept. It'll explain the bends as well as what happens to your lungs if you hold your breath when scuba diving and how you can float seemingly weightless above the reef. You see, we're all under pressure and I don't mean from work. When you're standing on a beach ready to go for a dive, you have the pressure from the atmosphere pushing down on you. This pressure is equal to the weight of one atmosphere. When you take your car to the station and put air in the tires, you'll be putting in around two bar of pressure or 29 psi. That means you're filling your tires with about two atmospheres of pressure. When you go scuba diving, you're going to descend into the depths of the ocean. Because water is heavier than air, the water creates pressure on your body. In fact, every 10 meters you go down, it's like adding one more atmosphere of pressure onto your body. At 10 meters, you have two atmospheres of pressure because you already have the one atmosphere of air pressure and now you're adding an additional atmosphere of water pressure. So at 20 meters, you have three atmospheres of pressure. At 30 meters, you have four atmospheres of pressure and so on. The pressure from the water increases the further you go down. There's a big difference between air and water. Water is denser than air. Air can be compressed where water can't. Think about taking all the air in a room and squeezing it into a bottle. You're taking a large volume of air and compressing it so that it fits into a smaller space. If you were able to look at all the air molecules, you'd have the same number of molecules but they'll now be squeezed closer together. It's like going on holiday with your family. You're all standing around the car and you have plenty of space to run around. Then you all get into the car so you can drive down to the beach and you have to squeeze in next to each other. You can't move around because you're all squeezed in tightly together in a smaller space. At sea level, you have one atmosphere of pressure acting on your body. When you descend to 10 meters, you now have two atmospheres of pressure acting on your body. The pressure has doubled. What this means is that the air has been squeezed to half its original volume. If you had to blow up a balloon at the surface, then take it down to 10 meters, the balloon would be half its original size. Same air, just squeezed into half the space. The opposite is also true. If you inflate a balloon at 10 meters and take it up to the surface, it would double in size. This is why scuba diving is dangerous and the reason for the most important rules around diving. Don't hold your breath, equalize early and often, plan your dive and dive your plan. These rules have to do with air expanding and contracting. When you descend, you equalize your ears by blocking your nose and blowing gently against your blocked nose. On the way down, you do that early and often to stop the air bubble in your eustachian tube from collapsing and rupturing your your eardrum. On the way back up, that air will expand and escape naturally back into the air you breathe out. You must, however, always breathe and never hold your breath. Imagine you went down to 10 meters and took a deep breath of compressed air. Then you went swimming up to the surface. Picture that balloon that we filled at 10 meters. If you took that balloon to the surface, it would double in size. Your lungs can't double in size and so they would pop like a balloon. Don't hold your breath. Now your body's like a furnace. Fire needs three things to burn, fuel, oxygen, and heat. 
In the air we breathe, there's roughly 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. Your body produces heat by burning the food you eat and the oxygen you breathe. So your body burns the oxygen and breathes out carbon dioxide. Important to note that your body doesn't store oxygen. It either burns it or breathes it out. Nitrogen, on the other hand, is either breathed out or stored in your body. This is because your body doesn't actually metabolize or burn nitrogen. In fact, your body stores nitrogen in the same ratio as the surrounding or atmospheric pressure. And this is where you need to pay attention because this is the central theory for the BENS or decompression illness. If your body burns oxygen and breathes out any unused oxygen and CO2 and it stores nitrogen, the deeper you go, the more nitrogen your body stores. In fact, if you go down to 10 meters, you might recall that for every 10 meters you go down, there is an additional atmosphere of pressure. So at 10 meters, you have two atmospheres of pressure. In order to equalize the pressure inside your body with the atmospheric pressure, your body starts to absorb and store nitrogen. At 10 meters down, your body absorbs twice as much nitrogen as it had at the surface. Nitrogen doesn't absorb instantly. It takes time for your body to absorb that nitrogen. And in fact, different parts of your body will absorb nitrogen at different rates. If you think about your body as soft and hard tissue, like a sponge or a block of wood, a sponge, like your lungs, will absorb nitrogen quickly, while a block of wood, like your bones or cartilage, will absorb nitrogen slowly. They will also expel or get rid of nitrogen as quickly or slowly as they absorb it. So your lungs will absorb and dump nitrogen really quickly. But your cartilage, like your elbow, will absorb it slowly and expel it slowly after it's been absorbed. And this is where the problem lies. When you go scuba diving and your body absorbs nitrogen, when you start to ascend to the surface, that nitrogen needs to come out again. In soft tissue like your lungs, it'll come out really quickly and you breathe it out without a problem. However, in denser tissue like cartilage, the nitrogen absorbs slowly and it's released slowly. That's why you dive your plan and plan your dive. As recreational divers, we have limits that we must stick to, time limits and depth limits. The deeper we go, the more nitrogen our body needs to absorb to reach equilibrium with the atmospheric pressure. And the longer we stay down, the more likely our body tissue actually reaches that equilibrium. After many years of trial and error, the Navy developed a range of tables that we now know as recreational dive tables. They tell us how long we can safely stay at a certain depth in order to avoid the bends. The bends happens when we ascend too quickly to allow the nitrogen to come out of our tissue. A bit like opening a bottle of cola. If you open it quickly, it fizzes and sprays everywhere. Open that bottle slowly and release the pressure slowly and you don't see large bubbles forming. That means the microscopic air bubbles come out of the solution and you breathe them out normally. But if all these tiny bubbles come out quickly, they start grouping together and forming larger bubbles. If those larger bubbles get stuck, that's called decompression illness or the bends. It's called the bends because often bubbles will form in your joints and you'll naturally hunch over or bend your body to alleviate the pressure. Really, the only way to get rid of them effectively is to get into a decompression chamber and go back down to depth. You then use a combination of coming up slowly over time and breathing more oxygen, which will attach to the nitrogen and help flush those bubbles out of your system. I hope you learned something about the pressure of scuba diving. Please leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know if you'd like to see more videos on how pressure works in scuba diving. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next video.